Hello everyone, welcome to Death Mute Studio. In this video, I will be reviewing 1988's Cohen and Tate. So Cohen and Tate is Eric Red's directorial debut. He's best known for writing two films in particular, The Incredible Near Dark and The Hitcher. Cohen and Tate stars the legendary actor Roy Scheider, best known for the film Jaws, and a young Adam Baldwin. If you're a fan of the TV show Firefly, then there's a high chance you've just spluttered in your kex right now. I know I did. And he also starred in Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. So, let's have it. <laughs> Common and Tate is about two professional assassins who are sent to kidnap a nine-year-old boy named Travis Knight, with a K, played by Haley Cross, who is under the United States Federal Witness Protection Program in Oklahoma after witnessing a mob killing in Texas. Cohen, played by Roy Scheider, is an older, jaded assassin. Tate, played by Adam Baldwin, is a younger, hot-headed psycho killer. The two hitmen assassinate the boy's parents and the agent who protected them, with the help of another agent who lets them in the house before he runs away. They capture Travis and drive him away to see their boss in Houston. When Travis learns this from Cohen, he takes advantage of a rising antagonism between his hijackers to further tangle and pit one against the other in order to survive. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is Eric Red's directorial debut and he is best known for writing Near Dark and The Hitcher. I like to see these films as some sort of loose Eric Red trilogy, with all three films revolving around some sort of sinister road trip through the back arse of America, and all of them operating in secluded environments. Either small towns, secluded roads, the quiet dead of night, or all of the above. Each film bringing a, a different aspect of horror to a car journey. With Cohen and Tate, instead of leaning more towards the horror genre like its two counterparts, it's more grounded in reality and focuses more on putting a dark spin on the buddy film subgenre. Instead of this being a film about two opposites learning to overcome each other's differences in order to overcome a common enemy, we find ourselves trapped just like the character of Travis on this journey, when it's not a case of when they'll finally accept each other, but who will kill who first before the end of their mission. Each obstacle or conflict that Cohen and Tate find during their mission could, could tip either one over the edge. Both of them hold a different kind of threat, not just to Travis, but to one another. Mr. Cohen, played by Scheider, is experienced, calm, ruthless, yet honourable, whereas Mr. Tate, played by Baldwin, is young, inexperienced, disciplined and psychotic. They're very much the, the yin and yang of the crime world. I really enjoyed Roy Scheider's performance as Mr. Cohen. Although he is a cold-blooded killer, there is an honour code to him. He comes across like an old samurai who's just doing his job. He takes no pleasure in his work, he's just doing what he has to do to complete his employer's task. You can see that he's tired and jaded and, and genuinely offended by the presence of Mr. Tate, as his employers think he's too old to complete the mission, which he believes he can complete effortlessly. Adam Baldwin's performance, on the other hand, seemed a bit uneven. I was struggling to tell if he was a, a flat-out psychopath or a young rookie who's just trying to impress his senior. And it seems that the creators as well were struggling to see which one the character should be. But I do think the tension between the two actors was captured really well. And when Baldwin's character does start to act more sinister and less insecure rookie, he does come across as a genuine threat and, and an unpredictable force of nature, as he is the brute force to Cohen's calm, cold-blooded experience. My main gripe with the film is the character of Travis Knight, the young kidnapped boy. In particular, the great ease in which he starts to drive a wedge between Cohen and Tate, and further exacerbate the tension between the pair of them. I can understand them getting under the skin of Tate easily, because Tate is rash, compulsive and inexperienced. But for Travis to be able to manipulate Cohen, I think, I think severely undermines Cohen's character and experience. And I don't fully believe that a nine-year-old boy has the emotional intelligence to be able to manipulate his peers. Maybe if it was hinted at during the film that Travis was highly intelligent for his age, then I could get on board. But it doesn't, so I don't. The film on the whole is decent and definitely worth a watch just for Roy Scheider's performance alone. But for the majority of it, it did seem like there were a lot of missed opportunities, especially to ramp up the tension in, in such a small, confined space with them three characters. It's clear that this is Red's first feature film, but you do get glimpses of brilliance. For example, there's an incredible scene that takes place during a highway police stop, where the police are aware that Travis has been kidnapped by two men and have created a roadblock to screen oncoming cars. It's too late for Cohen to turn the car around, otherwise they'll draw attention to themselves, thus going back on their own tracks and failing the mission. 
so Cohen leads them head on, slowly inching the car forward closer and closer to the roadblock and, and closer and closer to impending doom, smoothly and calmly controlling each situation as it comes at them. It's an incredible scene that slowly ramps up the tension with each moment. It's one of them scenes where you, you forget to breathe because while you're watching it, you're just so on edge. It's just a shame that that scene came into the film so early because it, its quality was so high. It's a scene worthy of a finale. You just wish the film had more scenes like that. You can see Eric Red clearly has the chops to build tension effectively. It's just disappointing that we only get one truly great scene from a film that, that could have had many. There is one thing that puzzled me throughout the film. Why did the mob hire two assassins to kidnap a child, killing his parents and federal agents in the process? For the mob to speak to the child about if he did or didn't see a mob hit? It's heavily hinted at during the film that the mob are going to kill Travis anyway. So why not just kill him? If you killed his parents and federal agents. It's not as if the mob are going to say to Travis, Okay Travis, you are good to go now. You clearly didn't see the mob hit that I've just admitted to doing. Thanks for clearing everything up. Goodbye. I have, I have no idea what that accent was. It, it was meant to be Italian, but it, I, I don't know. So back to my point. Why bother going through the trouble of kidnapping Travis in the first place? It didn't make sense. To me, anyway. Besides that, although Roy Scheider puts in a great performance and the highway stop scene is fantastic, I feel that Conan Tate was a missed opportunity. And I think given Eric Red's clear writing talents, he could have made this into an exhausting but rewarding, nail-biting, tension-filled thriller. But I can't recommend the highway stop scene enough. I'd recommend the film on that scene alone. And that is my review of 1988's Cohen and Tate. Have you seen the film? What are your thoughts on it? Do you agree with my review? Let me know on social media and the comments below. Please support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. It will help me out massively. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Ta-da.